Hello parents and guardians and welcome back to Beyond the Boardroom. Today we're on location at Nicomo Park Middle School and we're with the media specialist Mrs. Powell. Welcome Mrs. Powell. Thank you. We have a special thing that goes on it seems like every Halloween now it's become a tradition where the media center transforms into a miraculous work of art and so I'm going to turn today's session over to Mrs. Powell and let her explain what's happening uh, this year at Nicomo Park Middle School. So Mrs. Powell, we'll turn it over to you. All right, thank you. Uh, we have made an escape room for our students here. This is the second year that we have done the escape room. We usually just uh, transform half of our library into a, an outdoor wooded area, like a haunted forest. And um, we kind of take it a step further and we've made actually an escape room. And the students will come in, um, they will actually be exploring things and we'll take you through some of them here in a minute and um, they'll be hopefully learning some things as they're going through too but it's also we do this around Halloween every year so that it's kind of a little spooky also so this year our theme is um, we have Dr. Cryptid who isn't here today but she is a uh, paleontologist who is looking for the bones of cryptid creatures and so we've talked to the kids about what cryptid creatures are and when we enter into the library you enter into Dr. Cryptid's office and you can see that she has been on the search for these bones and then we have and I've told the students we have turned the world upside down and so we are now heading north and um, Dr. Crypto's office is in uh, Africa and so we're going to visit all seven continents and we have our continent flag here that that shows the kids a little bit about that and now we are heading north and we will just go into each of the seven continents if that is okay and we start here and we are in Africa and the students um, so they start with QR codes and they scan a QR code and that tells them which continent to go to because each continent um, it spreads the kids out it gets them going different directions so they're all in the same place at the same time and so they will come in and they will scan their QR code and it will give them the first clue as to where they're supposed to go next um, and some of the students um, one of the things that we have is the kids all have these special flashlights and there are clues all over the, pla the place. Um, these black little flashlights are black lights. So it might say find the triangle and the stars and then they have to look below and they either are going to dig in the dig site or there's a hole over here on this side where they have to actually reach their hand in and uh, get a clue out of that. And so then the clues will tell them someplace else that they may have to go. And um, they also have these cryptexes that they have to solve a clue and spell out um, the word that they that 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 is their clue. Um, so that's and there's a clue inside there also, and that's they use their cell phone to scan the QR codes and that takes them to the next room. So we'll go over here to Australia. And I have to have lots of help with this. My daughter is uh, she's written all of the clues, she's written all the games, and I really am just in charge of decorating, and um, she has done all of this, so I'm very lucky to have her, and we had lots of people help us with all the decorating and stuff. So in here we have Australia, we have the Great Barrier Reef, and we talk about how uh, spiders, how poisonous the spiders uh, in uh, Australia are. So um, one of the things that kids have to do in here is actually put their hand down in the coral reef or put their hand in here in the spider web to get the clues out and they um, enjoy doing that and we also have queen victoria desert and uluru rock which obviously they're not the right size but they're um, just kind of give the kids an idea of some of the the landmarks that are on the, each continent and that's another one of our dig sites that the kids have to dig into to get their clues and so they get a clue in each room and um, they're, they're looking for bones of these cryptid creatures but um, they actually are just getting code words to use to, to get to the bones. And then we will move into Asia. And in Asia we have, and this is where they will scan in on their, each time they move to a different continent they have to scan in first to get the clue to make sure they're in the right continent to make sure that you know they when they scan their clues so like if they're the blue team um, all their words on their clues will be blue so if they scan this and um, the words turn up green or something there's there's something somewhere wrong if they don't scan and get their blue words if, if they're the white team um, 
well, their words will be black, but it'll be, actually, no, it's on black, and then they have white words, so, um, and then red words. So that keeps kids on the same right track. They know if they're on the right track or not, as long as their words are their color. And we are now entering Asia. And in Asia, we have the Great Wall of China. We have the Gobi Desert. And we, um, we've kind of tried to go with biomes. So we um, have a desert area. We have a, a tundra area. Um, we talked about the Yeti being in um, the Himalayan mountains. And so as the children leave Asia, then we kind of have sort of Mount Everest in our Himalayan mountain area. The kids also have puzzle boxes. Uh, each team would have to solve a puzzle box uh, to get another clue out. And the inside here is a QR code that they would have to scan. And we are now heading into Europe. And we have the Swiss Alps. And we have talked to the students about how, um, which is just a silly thing that we added in, um, that uh, cryptid creatures like to hide their bones in tree stumps. So the students would have to uh, take a fishing pole and fish for a clue that's at the bottom of this. They've really enjoyed doing this. And this, everything is just magnetic. And there's a box in here that's got a clue in it. So they would fish in there to get a clue out. Um, and then follow the clues around Europe. Um, every student, every team has to do a Sudoku, Sudoku puzzle. I say those things. Um, and to get part of their um, clues also. Uh, we have Count Dracula's castle, another thing the students have enjoyed seeing. And of course they like to go in there and mess with the with Count Dracula. And then we have Stonehenge and we've talked to them about how uh, are the kids, we talked to the kids about how cryptid creatures like to leave their bones around Stonehenge or something about Stonehenge. Um, and it's really funny to see which kids actually know what Stonehenge is and what ones don't, but they're, you know, they learn a little bit about what, what it might be. So they get their clues and then we're, we move on. So kids will be going, some kids go from Europe into Asia to Africa, some kids go we're about to go to North America here in a minute, and so they, they're all going different directions. Their clues take them different directions, so they're not usually the same place at the same time. Okay, we're gonna be heading back out through Africa. And when the kids, uh, when we finish in Africa, I, they know that they are going to have to head across the Atlantic Ocean to get to North America from Europe. So we are gonna go across the Atlantic Ocean. And we are still a library, we're a functioning library, so the Atlantic Ocean is where the students take their books out from, and Antarctica is where they check their books out. Uh, when, they get, when they get ready to actually check their books out, they go to Antarctica. So that's our seventh continent there. There's my wonderful library aids. <laughs> so we crossed the Atlantic Ocean, and now we're ready to head into North America. And in North America, kind of keeping with our biomes, uh, we walk into the grassland area, kind of Central America. Um, we kind of sort of have a redwood forest, sort of, and a tundra area. And we still have to fish in the trunks in here. Okay, when students have all of their clues and everything that they um, have gathered, they come to South America. And in South America, they tell whoever's standing here um, there are three code words, and if they have their code words correct, they get to enter South America. If not, they have to go back and uh, retrace their steps and figure out where they went wrong. Um, and then if they do get it correct, they get their uh, little bag of bones, and so they bring them into South America. And in South America, it's usually dark and kind of creepy in here. Uh, they will find their plate of their... Um, cryptid creature, so they've been given clues about which cryptid creature they've had all along. And so um, this one is like the dragon, and uh, one of his powers is air. So they would come and they would find, uh, and they would see if their bones fit. And if their bones fit, they would put them into the puzzle. 
and I got really lucky because I found the one that actually does this one. So they put their puzzle pieces in and then they hit their light and when they have done that, then they get to go into the reward room. And that is their um, trip through the continents. So we've hit all seven continents. And one of our cryptid creatures that was all our, already had been found is the werewolf. So we tied the werewolf in uh, throughout our story. They, as, they're, as they're playing the game, they're also reading a story that goes along with it. So there's lots of reading that they have to do. As, when the students finish putting their bones in the plate, then they get to go to the reward room and through the cave door they would go into that room and we had on loan from the Museum of Osteology um, bones that they let us borrow for a few weeks so we're very fortunate and very thankful to the Museum of Osteology for letting us borrow some of their bones. Uh, we had a giant skull of a horse that was real and we had some replicas so it was um, the students learned what the word replica meant and um, some of them were actually real. Um, so they sit in there and they got to look at that and that was also where they would stay until all the students finished and then they got a piece of candy and then they were finished with their um, escape room. Well, Mrs. Powell, thank you for showing us around today. This is absolutely amazing. But I know it wasn't just for Nicoma Park Middle School. You also opened this for uh, Nicoma Park Intermediate, correct? Yes, the fifth graders did tours through here. Um, so they got to come through and see. And it was kind of neat because the kids were like, do we get to do this next year and stuff? So it gave them a little bit of, you know, seeing what the middle school, what goes on over here and stuff. So that Well, was you've neat. really transformed this and you made the learning fun. And I know that the amount of work Wow, it's just, <laughs> this is absolutely amazing. It's so we can't say thank you ever. enough for what you do uh, for the students of Nicoma Park Middle School, but also opening up for Nicoma Park Intermediate. And it's not just a one year thing. Like I said in the beginning, you've done this several years. So thank you for all you do at Nicoma Park Middle School. You make learning in middle school, that transition time, so much fun. The kids look forward to it and it's it's simply amazing. So, so thanks all for all you do. You're welcome. Thank you parents for joining us and we look forward to uh, visiting with you again next time.